This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending the Patrick Medford Library's virtual program on how to build a sandcastle like a pro. We have our pro expert here, Matt Long, who I'm going to turn the time over to. Uh, there's a chat box in the upper right hand side of your screen where you can send any of your questions in or any concerns that you have that I'll be monitoring throughout the program. Um, there'll be some time for question and answers, definitely. I want you to come in if you could just uh, keep your mic muted so that there's no background noise, but feel free when, you're, when we have a question, you can definitely unmute yourself. And I'll turn the time over now to Matt. Thank you so much for your time. I hope everyone enjoys. Except Matt, I think you're still on mute. <laughs> Okay. okay. Perfect. Good? Thank you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming and joining us tonight. I'd like to special thank the uh, Pet Dog Network Library for hosting this event. Um, my name is Matt Long, and um, I build sandcastles pretty much for a pretty much for a living. I built them virtually all over the world. The largest I ever did solo was right in downtown Manhattan. Uh, 55 tons of sand over 14 days. Anyway. I am also the uh, designer and founder of Sandy Vegas Sand Tools, and that's pretty much what I'll be using tonight. Uh, beyond Sandy Vegas Sand Tools, I'll be using some professional tools that we also sell on the Sandy Vegas site. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is build a sand castle and give you a lot of little tips and tricks that's going to uh, help you amaze your friends and have a great time when you go to the beach. Um, we will have a question and answer period, and hopefully that will work out with the sound. I'm going to get started in a minute or so, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this uh, camera a bit closer, so you may not see me as much, but you'll see my hands, and I'll tell you, uh, explain you just what I'm doing as we go along. All right, I'm going to bring that camera in now, and we're going to get right to it. I already made the mark, so this should work pretty well. Okay, here we go. There's the stage. First, I'm going to get these things out of the way. And when you go to the beach, of course, your sand supply and your water supply is pretty much pretty much unlimited. So you can um, you can just get as much sand and pile it as high as you want, and as much water to wet it as you want, and um, that'll determine how big your castle is going to be. But don't get crazy until you get experience because it takes time. These are very time consuming activities. What are you scared of? Being crowned and uh, the key, the absolute key to sand sculpting is wetting your sand and uh, packing it as tight as you possibly can. It's the only way you can carve it. You can't carve this, but you can really carve this. Okay, so the trick is. If you're carrying sand from the ocean, don't you don't want to waste any of the water because well, it's a lot of work. So what I usually do is I make a little little lake in the middle of my pile of sand, then I pour it in it just up and run off the side. It stays here and it gets the sand nice and wet. I'm using a particularly good sand here. Um, most beaches you can you can make a sand castle on most any beach you can, but you know, it's like baking a cake, the better the ingredient, the better the result. So I went down the center and now I'm bringing some of the sand up. One of the most crucial parts of carving sand. Now, when we do this, we have little cute names for what we do. This is our base pile. Self-explanatory, there'll be three steps. We're gonna do the base pile, we're gonna do, use some forms of what we call hard pack sand, and we're going to use a technique called the hand step, which is where we'll make a slurry and we will um, use that slurry to add parts to the castle. By the way, I have no plan for what castle I'm making here tonight. I'm going to do what I normally do with the sand castle and let the sand tell me where to go. We let the sand with half the time. I am on the tabletop, so I have to be a little careful about how much water I add because I don't want to make a little swimming pool down. But 
once we have the base file, <laughs> we're going to move into uh, what we call a hard pack with the form. This is your basic form. It's a bucket with the bottom cut out, so you can see right through it. Put the narrow end up, set it into your base file, and then take sand and start filling that bucket, filling that form up. I go up four or five inches here. And now watch how much water I'm going to add to this. Not just a little bit. I'm going to saturate it. Make sure I mix it down. Sand sculpting is a process, but if you don't follow the process, you'll be starting over again. So you want to work hard in the beginning to make sure that your pound up, as we call it, and your base pile and everything is strong. And you'll see why. By the way, taking a break. I also recommend going to the beach with a real shovel. You don't want to be doing this stuff by hand. Even if I was doing this, I'd probably do it with the shovel. I like a flat shovel because I can skim the top layer of the sand on the beach, which is usually the better sand. This is a can you dig it form, but we're not selling it at the moment. We're looking for a new manufacturer for us. Make just the right size bucket. They were getting very expensive to make. But you can go to Home Depot on the time being, buy yourself a five gallon bucket and cut the bottom out. If you've ever tried to use a little mold at the beach and see it's something to turn it over and pull the bucket, it doesn't come off because it's airlocked. It's when you cut the bottom out that these are going to slide off nicely. See that I'm packing this hand tight. I'm not going to fill this quite to the top because we don't want to get too high enough of the frame here. You see that I spend a little time making sure this is all packed up real nice. Because I really don't want to spend the time redoing the whole thing. I don't get it right. The process is the process. You can't mess with it. You've got to wet the sand and pack it tight. And this, my friends, is one of the most important things you'll learn tonight. Now I'm going to slide this off. And right away, you can see what's going to happen here. We're already starting to develop some height. The height is what creates a castle and it's what gives everything drama. Uh, people look at this and they say, oh man, you know, sand's not supposed to look that way. It's supposed to be this pretty powder under our feet, but here you go. It's starting to elevate, take the shape. Next thing we do, which we do sell at Kenny Dig It, we have a tube. Tubes are great for placing the cap. You put them anywhere you want. We're probably going to do a couple of them quickly here. But for now, I'm setting my tube in place, and now I'm going to create a, a, what we call a slurry. The slurry is, I got this about halfway filled with water. I'm going to add my sand right to the bucket. Uh, I apologize if questions are coming up on the screen. I can't really see them. So here, but not yet, Matt. We're good. I'll keep monitoring for you, though. Let me Thank know you. If something is crushing. All right, so here I'm making this nice blurry. It's super wet. Super wet. Watch this. Yeah. It's like drippy castle stuff. Now I'm going to take big apple, put it into my tube. A big blob right in there. Jiggle it, tap it, take it down. 
I vacationed in Cape May, New Jersey, and I saw a guy making a little thing on the beach one day. And um, pretty much led to my wife becoming a sandcastle widow because I became so obsessed with making sandcastles. It's all I did when I was on vacation for a couple of years. And then one day I met a professional sand sculptor and he enjoyed the, uh, he liked the tools that I made. So I started manufacturing them and he invited me to a contest. And so one thing led to another. I see how I slide that off. I should be talking about this. Carefully, I'm jiggling, sliding this off and how we have more elevation for our base pile, for our first pound up, and our second level for a sandcastle tower. You can already see how I'm making the tower. This is one of the hardest things. Is once you've made this tower, it's not the hardest thing, but it's a secret. Once you've done this, and it's really not too difficult, you're going to see that the uh, castle now becomes something easier to make rather than just working with the pile. I'm going to continue with my slurry and I'm going to add a cap to this tower right here by adding globs of slurry onto it. Now, because I've done this a lot, I have shaped the basic shape of the tower with my hands. You can do it with your hands, but you got to be careful. First thing though, clean the sand <coughs> from the bucket. Staple cup. Put it right on top here, and the trick is this. So watch that, I'll move this sand quickly to my place and place it, but don't start tapping at it. Don't try and do this, you cannot. Just let it settle. If you tap it, it's going to fracture. You'll be starting over again, you don't want to do that. I'll take one more thing to get it to kind of a point. Again, just hold it up, letting the water drain out. Again, this is a pretty good sand, so it's holding a lot of water. At the beach, this is going to happen for you much more rapidly. And here you go. I'm just going to shape out the top of my tower. Very simple. I'm bracing this so it doesn't come down. When I hit one side, I hold my hand against the other. Now you can try this by hand, or you can go right to one of the uh, tools that we're going to be using now. So basically you see the roof out of the sandcastle tower. And now I'm going to start with uh, my favorite sandy digger sand tool. And I'm just going to start shaving this down. Now when I do this, you know, folks look at it and they say, oh, well, you do it done so many times. And, you know, from doing it so many times, my hand moves kind of quick. But if you look, you'll notice that I'm not taking much sand when I shave it. I'm just taking a little bit at a time. Even though my hand is moving real quick and smooth, I'm not taking a lot of sand. If you take a lot of sand, you're going to chop into it. Stuff is going to start falling. You're going to be very unhappy. <laughs> We'll be starting all over again. Now I can't see this in the front too well, but that's good. Now, you know, in a, in a professional contest, we have to do the back of the sculpture as well. In a commercial project, you know, doing the logo for a company or something, they only want the effective side, the A side, because you can only take a picture from one side. So we're going to focus a bit on the front, just doing the back where I have to for balance. And if you were here next to me, I would say this looking down, think of this as the center of this round circle. And that's where you shave from. So your point finishes up here. Wow. That looks pretty good. Now, with the castle tower, what do we have next? We're going to have a roof line around here. What I do for the roof line is I take the, the this my favorite candy digger tool, and I just drag it slowly around. Kind of make a line. And you know, 
after a lot of years, you start developing precision with a little ease. But the truth is, most real castles were built in the 1300s, 1500s, and uh, you know they're a little out of whack. So why shouldn't your sand castle be a little out of whack? Don't worry about getting these things perfect. Cut your roof line. I'm angling down a little bit into my tower. And now to define it, I'm going to remove sand from the top. Reaches in nicely. Now the trick here, and 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 how you know we learn from our mistakes, right? And how do you become an expert? Well, you make every imaginable mistake that there is. You just keep making mistakes until you until you make less. Anyway. One of the mistakes that people make here is that when they're digging in the side, we want a straight wall down right here, okay? And we want that pretty much a straight wall all the way around. The thing that a lot of people do is they start digging in. They start digging in a little too far, and then it, it, it you undermine it. You know, you get too thin down in here, and this is going to fall over. So what you want to do is make that wall as straight as you can, Let's have a look. I got to get back here with you guys so I can see what it looks like. Not bad. Everybody with me so far? I'm just cleaning up this line. It's looking good. All right. Okay. All right. Now we're going to uh, do, do a little decorating. The thing you have to remember about sand castles and sand sculpture generally. Is that we start at the top and work our way down. If I did something down here and then had to go back and sand falls, it ruins my work. I have to redo it. So always keep in mind you're working from the top down. Now the next thing we'll want in here is going to be right at this roof line. We're going to add some, uh, I guess I call them crenellation. They're just those little notches that you see in castle tower. This is a, another candy digger tool. It's just a little bit wider. In the last one, and you can use it to straight the sides as well. But you can see that it's the next thing. Nothing in here, we didn't do anything here where it's the next sort of level going down. More, we'll put a couple more in. it up. And now the next thing that comes along with the castle, of course, in the castle tower or turret, whatever you want to call it, is going to be windows. Ooh, windows. Windows are fun to make. You have to be careful and you got to go slow. Like I always say, you got to take a little bit of sand at a time. Don't dig, don't dig your window. You dig a hole in there, you're going to pull out chunks and you'll be patching it up, or maybe, as we say, starting over. So let's put a window. I don't know, we'll start with one right here. We'll start with one in the middle so you can see it. See this? I'm just scraping a little bit. A little bit of sand at a time. And we're going to get deeper and deeper. Oh, a little more than a half to three quarters of an inch deep. You don't have to measure it. What you want to do is dig it deep enough where you'll see a shadow. You know, if you do this and then you take a picture later, it's not going to show. So you want to make sure that you dig the hole enough to make a shadow. See the chunk out of there? Later on, when you develop your OCD for castle making, you will fix those things. Otherwise, for now, just leave it. Now, there's one window. And sometimes we'll make a castle and the windows will be all even around, but it's a little tricky. So, thinking ahead, I want to put a staircase on this castle. I want to put a winding staircase, and these windows, I'm going to make them come down 
on the side here, going down the set of skills. All right. <laughs> I'm going to switch to one of my favorite tools we sell on the Kennedy site. These are uh, offset, sort of offset palette knives. This is a, a very good palette knife that we modify for a flat edge on front. And it's very good for chopping through sand that. Now, these are a little tricky, so pay attention. First thing we're going to do, I want to make a winding staircase around here. So what I'm going to do is carefully take sand away. And you can do this with the, uh, the bigger tools, especially for the kids because they're, they're not as sharp. Well, they're not sharp at all. I mean, they need cut this. And now I have a little ramp going down the outside of my castle. And I want to turn that into a staircase. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to this tool. And I'm going to start right here. Now the trick with doing a winding staircase is that each time we make a step, we're going to chop down and clean it out. But each time we make that step, we're going to turn that tool head so that it's points to the center of the tower. This way, the stairs will wind. If we just go straight, the stairs will go off and fall off the table. And the little guys that walk up and down these stairs and use them every day to go to work and play in the schoolyard, they'll fall right off the end of the table and never see me. So here's my first step, cut down, stop in, clean it up. Next step, cut down, right then, can you see that? I'm going to try to get to the other side so I got to do that. Cut down, you see my tool is pointing right to the center. This way the stairs are turning around the tower. More. Clean up the back, going to the back. Now. Well, let's do the let's do a couple more of those windows, right? Remember I said that they were going to wind right down the side? So here we go, more or less the bottom, which is the top of the next window. I'm just going to scratch in again a little bit of sand this time, more and more as I go. And if the height of this window comes out the height of that window, pretty much an accident. Don't get crazy about it. You see that, but you know, we're having fun. One more over here. Can reach in this way, or from the bottom. And clean the stairs again. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I want to show you a little something that uh, if you know you don't have a lot of time at the beach and you just want to have some fun. I'm only going to work on one side of this sculpture, and watch what I do. I'm just going to cut this away, chop it away. And I'm going to come right down right through the bucket form, you know, where I pack the sand, and go right down into the base pile. Put this down straight so maybe you can see it a little bit better. And if you just 
made this turret and splayed out this end, just smoothed it out down here, you would be, you would have a cool cast trying to give you a better view of this. See how that is just slopes, a, a, a little slope? And, and that's a pretty cool castle right there. You know, you don't have to get crazy if you don't have the time. But because you're here tonight, I'm gonna to show you a lot of cool stuff. All right, now, yeah, that, that's a quick way out <laughs> on a hot day. All right, so next trick about the stairs is this. And uh, you can do this, you can do so many things with the stairs. Uh, something to keep in mind when we're talking about building from the top down, we're also building from the center going out. So, you know, you're not going to do something uh, and then have to go back in here. I can't do something out here and then go back in, same as before, it's going to fall down, get in your way, you'll be redoing. So, what we've done is we've created the stairs. And this on the staircase, this is called a tread. And this is called a riser. You don't need to know that. There'll be no cut. But what we want to do is dress up the outside. Because though they look like steps, they don't look like cool sandcastle steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them closer to the tower, just shaving them down. And you see how just as I clean up the outside already, they begin to become defined and take a little bit more interest. They become a little bit more interesting. Now, what I like to do sometimes is give them a little design. So, what I may do is just fill it in. And it's easily done by trimming the outside. Now, I'm going to show you something that's really down the line for you guys, for anybody beginning, but something that you may want to keep in mind. When I cut this, you see I'm cutting into the pile of sand. What I don't want to do is cut out the back because it'll fall down and the chunks will pop out. You always want to cut into the sand whenever you cut. All right, now I'm going to clean these down a little bit more below. Okay. And that looks pretty cool too. Something I haven't shown you guys yet. In our toolkit, we call this the uh, manually powered pneumatic sand blaster. Cute name for a straw. I buy the plastic ones at um, Starbucks. And when we sell a kit, we send you a regular straw. But the purpose of the straw is this. And again, if you pack your sand really well, um, the packed sand will stay in place. The loose sand is going to blow away. And that's why we use it. Keep the sand out of your eyes. And we're going to clean up this mess. We have a very much more dramatic uh, use of that tool after a little while. Now, I'm going to go back to our uh, my favorite little can you dig a tool. And to make these stairs even more interesting, the next level in interesting stairs, and what makes all sand sculptures interesting, in fact, if you're in a professional sand sculpting contest, one of the things they judge you on is uh, overhangs and, you know, drama uh, undercuts. And that's what we're going to do, an undercut, simple one, on the stairs. I'm going to start at the bottom, with this step here, and reach my tool in, exactly like I did up here. I'm going to cut across and just finish out anywhere. Now I'm going to put the tool up against the top of this tread, bring it across. Same thing here, top of the tool, top of the tread, come across. And right here from the top of the tread, I'm going to come across. Okay? So now we've undercut the stairs, but the next step is to cut a little line here. And now it's going to look like this is a slab of stone. Take away the sand underneath. Okay.
How are we looking? I can hear you guys. Looking good. Looking good. Any questions? Yeah, how come you never showed us that cut back on the stairs that you just did? How come I never showed us these? <laughs> yeah, it's Andy and Mark want to know. <laughs> Andy and Mark are extremely talented, fantastic builders. And, uh, but that was a new trick. You got to do It's not a new trick. You guys should know how to do that. Yeah, when you did the curve into the into the steps in the beginning and that that part. Maybe maybe I just, maybe I thought it was beyond you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love those guys. All right, so here we go. We have a staircase now, and you can see how it winds because we paid careful attention, turning our tool head, keeping it pointed at the center of the tower as we went down. Now, the next step is, I think something everyone in a uh, sandcastle. Here we have a wall. And you know we want it to look like something, right? So we're going to make some bricks in this wall. Every sandcastle has them. Um, one thing that you'll notice at this particular point is that this sandcastle, like every sand sculpture, it always has an A-frame. It's always got to be wider at the bottom. Should you dig in too far at any point along the way, you could have a collapse or tip over. This sand is structurally very sound. But at the beach, you're going to hit ordinary sand, so you'll have to be a little bit more careful about this particular uh, uh, thing, keeping it splayed, apering, right? Wider at the bottom, always wider at the bottom. That's what makes the undercuts dramatic. And this, most any sand is going to handle that much of an undercut. All right, so. <laughs> uh, this, this, by the way, is just a smaller tube if you want a smaller tower. I think we'll plan over here in a little while. But I want to show you these bricks because everybody loves them. And we'll just do one more undercut here. Now when you make bricks, no matter what else is going on, you want your bricks to be kind of level, but there's really no need to get crazy about this. It is a sand castle. And again, you know, uh, look at an old building uh, most anywhere, shoot New York City, or Europe, anywhere. And everything's kind of aged is, is a little bit distorted. So don't get crazy about these being perfectly straight or anything. So we're going to make the basic, basic wall design block. I just pick a spot, go approximately level around. Approximately, don't worry. This is determine the height of your brick. Something you should be aware of is that the larger your detail, the easier they're going to be. So don't take tiny little bricks. They're going to drive you crazy. And I'm using the same cut here. It's on an angle. Same cut I used here. Same cut I used underneath. Same cut again. I cannot make a castle without this tool. So now I've made my horizontal lines. Get rid of some of this sand. I'm going to make the steel uh, vertical. The trick with the verticals is you don't want to make a tic-tac-toe board. You want to think about how bricks are stacked. They each overlap the one below it and on top by half. So what I do is I take my width of the brick and I run that around. Again, it's an approximate, don't get crazy. And then I come right down the middle and split them. All the way to the ground. Stand away, gentle, always gentle. You know, you're not chopping, you're out there having fun. If you want to get these done quick, it's really not going to happen. It's more a uh, labor of love. Now, remember, I said I was going to show you a little more dramatic uh, use of this particular tool. Well, now I'm going to blow out all this dust that's left in there. And if I pack my uh, sand right, you know, only the dust will blow away. One of the things I like about this stroke is yeah, it has a little ridge up here. So you always put the right in here. Here we go. Ready?
how we look. Pretty cool, right? Let's get the last bit up in here. Clean them out. I think we're good to go. Now, if you want to, you know, you can put a few lines in here. Make them more, look like more like bricks, you know, stairs. And clean up. So far, so good. Any questions? No questions. It looks great, Matt. Well, I just have you. a quick question. Um, what kind of household tools can you use to make a sandcastle? Well, if you're using household tools, you know, there's not as many household tools uh, as you might think. A very common household tool is a melon baller, and that can be used for uh, a lot of things, creating, you know, round dig outs and stuff like that. Uh, my friend Rusty Croft, who was on Sandmasters with me, he was the uh, king of the hill. And uh, Rusty's favorite piece of tool, favorite tool was a piece of wood he found in his garage. And he used it for a lot of things. Um, oh, you can use a knife, but without that straight edge, it becomes a little bit difficult. Um, I don't use many kitchen tools, pallet knives, masonry tools. You know, I'll be, I'll be using this. I'm this big guy over here. And uh, you know you might be able to find something like this in Dad's garage. Uh, I don't think I use anything else from the kitchen. No. Well, listen, I'm going to show you one other thing here. Um, I'm going to put one more tower over here, and then we'll connect it with a little arch because you know that's interesting, and people always want to know how to do that. So I'm going to make a little flat platform right here. Do this in the back. I'm just going to put it kind of close. Use my slurry. It's going to be a much shorter, narrower tower than the uh, first one. Now, you know, uh, just to note, as I was saying before, that uh, the larger, the easier. When I started, I used this big one, and then I put the green tube over. If you can use that five gallon bucket, and your tower could be this big with the point on top, it will make it easier when you're learning than trying to get narrow and thin right away. Try it if you like. Um, but after, you know, this is a good practice. When you get practice size, um, take it from there. All right, so. You're doing good. It looks it's really good. cool. It looks yeah, really yeah. cool. Thank you. I better be doing good because when I look close to the screen, I see a, a sort of names of a couple of uh, <laughs> a couple of people that competed against up there that they're checking me out and making sure I'm not screwing this up. Jeff Strong, how are you doing out there? Long time. Good. Jeff is a tremendously talented sand sculptor artist uh, out of the great Northwest. Where, where, where are you from, uh, Jeff? I think Jeff may have logged off. He jumped off? Okay, that's all right. He did compliment you earlier and said, great, le great lesson, Matt, you are the master. <laughs> yeah, I, I've carved a lot of things. You can see my, my work on the Can You Dig It site or uh, sandsculpture.com so quite a lot of things I love castles and I made a lot of them here I'm just going to shaping it out a little bit like I say in the beginning and I'm, I'm doing this one just because I want to put a little arch in here and show you how they're done that's all right with Jeff he knows everything I could teach him already Yeah. And you know, every sand is different. One of the things that experience uh, gives you is that, you know, you can go to a beach or 
get a truckload of sand as many sculptures as I do on beaches, I do as many, equally as many, if not more, on streets and corners, and they bring a truckload in. But one of the things experience gives you is the ability to understand and know what you can and can't do with it. This sand, you can see, I can go fairly straight here. And it's going to hold up. At the beach, a lot of beaches you can you can do this much easily. This certainly much higher, and uh, you'd be taking a chance with a lot of beach sand. Okay, I'm not going to get too fancy on this one. I really want to just show you the arch. You're doing good. Thank you. Smaller towel, we're going to pull a window in here. Smaller ventilation. Hey, Matt, it's yeah. Mark. Mark. I have a question for you. Go ahead. Mark Schaefer. Mark Schaefer. Hey, when you, um, you add, sometimes you add little windows to your rooftops. Oh, up in here? Yeah, up there. Do you, yeah. um, do you yeah. add, do you add, like, do you cut your rooftop and then add yeah. sand to the top and then finish it? Or do you, do you carve that window in as you're actually carving your rooftop? No, the top up here, if I were to put like a dormer, you thinking, a dormer? I would, correct, I would, correct. I would, I would dig into this, put a blob of sand on it and carve it out. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Thank you. Couple of windows just so it doesn't look so bland over here. And now for the arch. There's a couple of different ways to do arches. The simplest is to just blob wet sand in here and dig a hole and then carve it in. You know what? I'll do that. I'll do that and then I'll show you the other trick. I'm still working with my flurry. And with the slurry, when we add to it, we call it the hand stack. So here's our slurry. I'm just going to drop it in here. And you know, where I stop the height will be the height of the uh, arch. Okay. Back to the front. Okay. So here we have this blob. We're going to clean it down with a straight wall. And clearing sand away is always a uh, trick. You just want to be careful and again a little bit at a time. And this is one way to make an arch. Now sometimes the arches have a uh, bit of an arch on top, so I'm going to give this the arch first. Thinking I'm working from the top and going down. Okay. And then very simply, dig a hole through. The conversation up and forward. So that adults can have conversation. Lost the picture. There's a lot of breaking up. I can't really hear. Is there a question in there? Hey, Matt, it's Andy. I have a question. So for a larger span of a bridge, do you ever dig into the side of the two towers? Like, I find myself doing that. I'm sorry, do I what? The two towers? Do you ever do you ever dig into the side of the towers to give it something to stick to, or? Absolutely. After I uh, after I finish this, I'm, I'm using another tool. This is like a uh, something in the kitchen. This is uh, very similar to an offset pastry knife, but again, offset pastry knives come with the curved top. You want to flatten it out so it's, it works much better for, for the purpose. So for a full arch, you dig the hole right through. 
I don't know if you guys can see daylight, but I'm through. And then I can go as high as I want once I have once I've gotten through. You know, if it holds down low, it's going to hold up high as long as you get this too thin up in here. And that's kind of like uh, one way to make an arch. All right. Now, another way my friend Andy was mentioning is, um, you know, it's 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 more advanced. It's a more advanced arch. And what I, I'm not even going to show it to you because you get frustrated with it at the beach. But you need two packed towers like we have here. We need two pack towers. And then what I would do is I would dig into one, dig into the other, and then feed my sand across wet. And you can do that with a slightly longer tower. It really depends on what the sand uh, will bear. You know, uh, some sand you'll be able to pour it. On uh, Sand Masters TV show I was on once upon a time, Kirk Rademacher and I made a uh, uh, an arch. It must have been uh, two and a half feet long out of a relatively decent uh, carving sand similar to this. And uh, it held beautifully with no substructure underneath or anything. It was just, uh, it was amazing. That was, that was, that I can show you. That was Kirk's, Kirk showed me that for the first time on that event. I'll show you how we did it. So you got this between your two towers. And what Kirk suggested was we would take dry sand Put the dry sand in between the tower as high as we want it. This is very similar to the other method, but I know everybody likes an arch, so I'm showing it to you. You just throw the dry sand up where you want, and then take your slurry, and you would have to dig a little hole, just a little chop out in here. Yeah. <laughs> You put the wet sand in, and you can tap it down because you have that other sand underneath. And then all you really do is remove the dry sand. And that's another way to make a simple arch. He just uses the dry sand. To hold up the dry sand, pile it up to the height you want, and then use the slurry again and put the slurry wet sand on top. Uh, look. See that I hear a lot of breaking up. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Snooky, that's good, my good, purple. good, good, good. They're good. Using my, oh. Okay, so here's your here's your bridge arch again. The technique. But the easiest way is not to make them too far. Pile a bunch of wet sand in and dig it out. You'll have fun with that. It's the easier way to do it. And then we take it from there. Now, let's see. Where is. Uh -oh. I'm off camera, but I can hear you, so don't talk about me. Okay, here's one of my favorite tools. We do sell this on the site. It's when you're uh, wanting to move a lot of sand. And here's a trick about sand castle that you should know. If you want to make them beautiful, you got to dress them up at the end. It's one of the tools you can use to dress them up. Sometimes you take sand away. On some tools, you just press the sand back into the pile. This tool does both, it gets things out. It's an offset masonry trial. Pretty common. And cleaning up the base of your sculpture is imperative. Makes it look clean, but you know what you're doing. That sets you up for a complete 
Now, we have this nice platform around here. When I say clean it up, let me just clean it up. Just shave it down around. You know, the castle, right? It's up on walls. There might be a moat down in here. Clean it all up. Take your time with that. All right, we're just doing a simple round on the front of this one, but we have a little trick to finish off too. I'll show you this. You know, sometimes at the top of the castle wall, those, those little blocks that uh, you'll see there, uh, and in between, the spaces in between are actually <laughs> what they call arrow slit. In the old days, the uh, you know the knights would shoot their arrows through these things. What I do is I you can do this on the ground sometimes. I take wet sand, a little dry sand, I tap it down. This may be a little advanced, but you might want to try it. So I'm showing you. See, I made a little cake. How's that good? Everybody want a piece of cake? Here we go. And then we're going to slice them into blocks. Wonderful, Matt. This is amazing. <laughs> amazing, Matt. This is the old family. <laughs> yes. We really amazing. love it. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to take these little blocks and just drop them on here. It may be a little advanced, you might want to try it, but I want you to see how pretty a castle can be. So here we go. I'm taking these blocks right off, they're still a little wet. Leave the space in between almost as long as the blocks. I have no words for your amazingness, it's awesome. Yeah, listen, you know, some of the things I'm showing you are pretty advanced and I do them kind of clean, but I'll tell you, my first sand sculptures, and boy, didn't my family have a laugh when they showed me some pictures of my first creations not long ago. And uh, truthfully, I had to burn them. <laughs> People like stairs, I can change the, change the curve of this just by shading it a little. See, you can use blocks to dry some, but it'll take a while sometimes. I'm very familiar with this sand. I've, I've used it on virtually a hundred jobs. So, you know, I, I'm sure you look at this and, and I'm making it look easy, and I am probably, but the truth is, I'm so very familiar with this sand. I, other sands, I struggle a little bit more. But here's the kind of thing you can do. And I'm going to show you one more wall texture because this is the easiest and funnest one. Going back to my little can you dig it sand tool, right? And watch this. I'm going to make squiggles. I'm just going to make squiggles all over the place. Looks like I'm ruining it, doesn't it? And then watch what happens.
that we have some field stone. Now, if I pick a little sand down here, rough it up a little bit, put a few more of these over here. Clean them out. And I think we have a sand castle. We actually use a brush to clean things up. Hey, Matt, clean out the back of that arc so you get a little light through there. All right. I even take water, especially when it's off. Not really. Ah, oh, there you go. How's that look? Great. Can you see what you guys are seeing? You know, sandcastles, when you make them at the beach, they can look just as uh, cool if they're all a little wonky and a little bit out of shape. Uh, one of the guys that first introduced me to uh, sand sculpting was a fellow named Chuck Fell. And Chuck, uh, Chuck would make all his, all his castle towers were twisted and turned and caps were on sideways. And, and I, I just thought, when I, when I first saw it, I thought they were the coolest thing ever. And, um, you know, I didn't realize how forgiving they were. So, you know, and, and these are, my castles get more precise, but don't, don't try and be precise. Just try and have fun. Get the elevation, uh, do the tubes, pack it tight, um, and, and work it out, you know. And if you're in the middle of, uh, if you're in the middle of the castle, and you don't want to do it, go home, come back later. Try again. There's, there's no end to uh, how, how, how rewarding they are. I mean, you know, you, you make a small one. Uh, there's just so much creativity. And maybe I get to do this again and I'll uh, show you even more tricks. You know, uh, there are elements that repeat in castles. And uh, once you learn them all, it's just how you put them together uh, that makes them look really cool. But you learned quite a few of the basics here tonight and even some. You know more advanced things, and uh, I think you should have fun with it. So, who's got questions? Anybody got questions? We got one question. Someone wanted to know <laughs> when you're learning how to carve faces, how did you do that? Did you learn first with sand or with clay? I was never very good at carving faces, but I've I've been forced to, and I've had them with great success. They are. Um, they're like a sandcastle, you know. Once once you learn how they break down, um, you know they're 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 spaced. They're, there's very marked um, uh, formulae. You know, there's formulas for how much distance there is. You know, the inside of your eye should line up with your nose. The outside of your mouth, the center of your eye. And if you learn those things, they will help you make faces. But faces, like uh, like anything, really take time. You know. You could start with animals. Animals have faces. They're a little more forgiving, but they are, in fact, uh, anatomically, they are faces. So, you know, they're a good way to practice. Dolphins, turtles, uh, you know, those things. What else? Anybody else? Great. Thank you. Another question someone wants to know, can you add anything to keep your sand sculpture forever if you were doing it at home with clay sand? Well, not forever. Uh, clay sand is a washed sand. So it's not the best sand structurally for holding you together, but some clay sands I've had fairly good results with. Um, when, when we create sculptures outside, we apply a fixative to the uh, uh, sculpture, and that is basically always to thin out with water, and we apply it with a uh, garden sprayer. Uh, it's a windscreen, and that'll protect it. Now, indoors, um, I made a sculpture in the store window. It was in there two years. 
um, outside, you know, outside in this band with a lot of fish that is on it. I do a sculpture in New Jersey and it stays there for a year outside. And it's a big sculpture, but I put a lot, a lot of pictures. Anybody else? Have you ever made a uh, sculpture of yourself with clay or sand? Of myself? No. You're carrying a lot of weight, there's not enough sand to clay. <laughs> what type of sand is that that you're using? Yeah. The sand right here. Um, you know, if you want to have fun, and some people, you know, I know a lot of people have tables like this. If anybody's interested, you can email me and I can actually send you uh, the plan for this particular table I built. It's got to be very sturdy. The stand I ordered from a quarry in uh, South Jersey uh, for bigger jobs, and then I just save a little bit. But it's quarry sand. <coughs> they call it utility sand. And the reason they do that, it has to be very dense packing. Um, when they lay pipes on the ground and they don't want them to shift, they will take the Oh, nice. So they don't move. And that's why they call it utility sand. Or sometimes I've heard it called typhoon sand, but it's a very dense packing sand. And, and you know, if you're fortunate enough to set up a little table in your garage or yard, uh, this is the sand you want to look for at a local quarry. Thank you. Uh, where did you get all of that sand from, Corey? Well, I, when I do big jobs in New York area where I live, um, I just steal a couple of buckets at a time and bring it home. Uh, there's always leftover sand on the sculpture. And this particular, oh. this particular sand has probably been 50 different sculptures. I use it a lot. I take it into... Uh, oh. Do you get it at Corey Beats? I'm sorry? At Chloe Beats. What beach is that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. There's a beach out um, near us. It's called Quarry Beach. Oh, Quarry Beach, yeah. I don't know Quarry Beach sand. Um, is that on Long Island? Yes, that's close to the Patchog area. Okay, so I, I, do, I have worked at uh, I worked at Lido Beach, Huntington, uh, um, Long Beach, and uh, Look at it, I don't know. I worked at all those beaches, and you know what? The sand out there is very good. It's good um, sand out there. Yeah. We Thank, start, yeah. We Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? No? When do you know when the mixture is right? Oh, well, that's a very good question. Now, when you're at the beach, you know, here again, I was limiting the amount of water that I was using. But when you're at the beach, you just want to like saturate that sand. It's going to drain out. But like here, I have nowhere for it to drain. So I have to be careful. But again, I know the sand. I know how much water I can use. Uh, but if, if I was doing a sculpture at the beach, just saturate it. You know, when I work at the beach, they usually give me a hose and I just pour that water on, pour it on, pour it on. So that's why you want to make a pile that's manageable because you're going to carry water from the ocean and uh, you know, carrying water from the ocean is not always easy um so you don't want, you know you don't want to be such a big pile you you're, you're spending an hour just wetting it down um when i make a pile at the beach on the occasion well even if i use a hose or carry it i wet the pile as i go so that the base is wet before i add too much sand to the top Lots of water. Lots of water to pack it tight. Okay, but like, which one should you have more? Should you have more like wet sand or should you have more dry sand? Oh, wet sand. You only want to work with wet sand. That's all. The only time you see I use dry sand is this little arch down here. Um, but beyond that, no dry sand. You want to wet the sand as best you can. Okay, but like, when it's too wet, do we add like dry sand? To like make it strong? No, no. Just wet it and it will drain out and find its own saturation point and it will be good to go. Okay, good. Deal. Well. Thank you. There's another question. Um, can you make a sand castle on a lake? Oh, some lake sand is great. You know, uh, sure. As long as there's sand, you can do it. No question. As long as there's sand. And some rivers, in fact, um, you know, 
in my travels, I, I travel quite a bit to make stamp filters. And in my travels on certain places, you actually order river sand from the quarry. Uh, the river sand is usually very fine. So yes, on the lake, on the river, wherever the sand. Anybody? Thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions? Feel free to unmute or you can use the chat box. What was your favorite place that you made a sandcastle in? Oh, man. A lot of really, I've been very, very fortunate. Um, I had a job in uh, in Anguilla, it was a little island for nine years off of St. Martin, the most beautiful spot in the Caribbean. Um, I've worked in Costa Rica, New Zealand, um, magnificent places. I, I did I did a party for a number of years for the rich and famous out in the Hamptons and got to go to the party as the artist of the sculpture. And you know, that was cool. Well, it wasn't the greatest place to, to, that I've worked at, but it was, it was probably one of the coolest. Um, Boy, where else? All over. You know, one of the interesting things, like I, 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 I compete in um, a lot of sand sculpting contests, master level contests. And uh, the sand sculpting community is a great community of, of uh, artists, like minded artists. And um, if anyone out there ever has a chance to go to a professional sand sculpting contest, uh, don't miss the opportunity. Because when a contest is done and there are, you know, anywhere from 12 to 20 magnificent 10 foot high sand castles, sand sculptures, uh, it's, it's really breathtaking, it's really breathtaking. You absolutely love it. Never have a chance, never miss the opportunity. There's actually a, a, a sand sculpting museum in Jack, Japan, and uh, you can Google it anytime and see some spectacular sand. Yeah. What was your favorite place you've been to? Oh, home. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, that'd be very hard to, uh, boy, that would be hard. I've been fortunate. Uh, and I guess you're asking about sand sculpting. I don't know, it might be Costa Rica. Or a lot of places in California, it's beautiful. Uh, one of my, probably my favorite place to carve sand, believe it or not, is in New York City. Uh, and I've had the opportunity 25 times, I'm sure, uh, to carve sand right in the city where they drive a truckload of this very sand in. And uh, they give me the holes, and I go to work for sometimes a day or two, sometimes for a week. And um, it's fabulous. South Street Seaforth, uh, Whitehall Water Street, uh, DC Street, and the Silver Tunnel to Tower Run. It's, I've done a lot in Manhattan, and it's one of my favorite places because you just see so many people, and sand just doesn't belong there, but there you are. That's me. What else? Uh, what beach is your favorite? Like, what is your favorite beach to? put your like sand castles and sculptures on? Well, I'll tell you. Um, last year, for the first time, I went to Bermuda. And in Bermuda, they talked about a pink sand that they have down there. Now, the pink sand is OK for sand sculpting. It's OK. Uh, but on the far end of Bermuda, there's a national park called Cooper's Beach. And if you go out to Cooper's Beach, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. And it's probably the best beach sand for carving I've ever encountered. And I've been on a lot of beaches. But that little place is probably a dream. And the rest of the beaches on Bermuda are absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, but that one beach has the great sand. How and many? If it wasn't for the... Uh, this virus, I would have been returning to Bermuda only three or four days ago. Mm. It. How, how much sand sculptors have you made in your whole life? How many sand sculptors? Oh, a couple hundred, I guess. Huh? A lot. 
Uh, some really big, some you know, no bigger than this. When I go to the beach with the family, I'll make something like this, maybe twice the size. Um, and then, you know, uh, you know, in contests or jobs, I, I've made them 10, 12, 15 feet high. Yeah. Yep, a lot of them. What's your biggest sand sculptor? The biggest sculpture I ever worked on alone was in Manhattan uh, after Hurricane Sandy. There was a uh, promote, promoting the uh, it was promoting downtown Manhattan, and they actually did a sand castle on Whitehall and Water Street, and that was 55 tons of sand. It took me 14 days to carve it, and okay. it took me four or five weeks. And uh, that's the biggest thing I've done along. I have worked with teams on stuff of 100, 150 pounds. Yeah, it's a lot of sand. It's a lot of sand. How much? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How much is sand on? I think 150 tons. 150 tons, that's a lot of sand. That would be like uh, 20 minivans stuck together that big. Wow, it's 20 One minivan. Minivan. <laughs> oh. Matt, do you have a trick on how to get all that sand off of you? Uh, no, I just, you know, I, <laughs> when you ask, because my, you know, my, my poor wife, <laughs> it, the sand is insidious. It gets all over the place. There is a great trick that uh, you know some beach growers use. If the sand dries on you and you're at the beach and it dries on you, if you take a little talcum powder, you know, baby powder, and you sprinkle it on your hands and, and, and rub, every grain of sand falls right off. Yeah. It's a pretty cool, cool trick, but um, no, there's no other trick. Hose. I, I, have to, I have to hose off when I go home outside before I go in now, and then I have to go right in the shower. Otherwise, I don't eat tomorrow. <laughs> That's a great trick. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, I think, are, are we near the end of our show? I don't know. I mean, I'm good. There's more questions on here. We'll give a last call for questions. Anybody wants to unmute? Yes. I heard that you were um, going to Cape May where I was to sculpt. So maybe I might see you there. Now, I, I don't, I go to Cape May on vacation. Okay. I used to run their amateur contest nowadays, and it's coming up on July 10th, the so week Friday. I run a amateur contest in Wildwood Press, which is, you know, right mm -hmm. a little bridge on uh, Cape May. And it's funny now, Cape May, when I was learning, and then the storms came and they had to replenish the sand. And when they replenish a beach, the sand is usually a little more gravelly. So Cape May, the sand is difficult to work, but workable. But if you go right over the beach, to, right over the bridge to Wildwood Crest and Wildwood, the sand there is pretty amazing for the party. And uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting and fun uh, uh, contest, amateur contest. Uh, some of those guys you heard earlier, Andy and um, and uh, Mark, they compete as uh, semi pros in our semi pro division at that Wildwood Press in Hunter. We're lucky to have them. It's, it's some pretty amazing stuff. That's next, not this Friday, a week from Friday. If you happen to be doing it. Thank you. Anybody else? want to thank you, Matt, for your time so much. This is really yeah. fun. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know what Thanks, Matt. Matt. You know what happens to these when they're done? Matt. Yeah. I can build Legos, but I can't build a sand sculptor as, as better than you. Who can? <laughs> Who can do it better than me? I want to meet them. Nobody. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a few. There's a few, but not many, I'm proud to say. 
<laughs> Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. 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 See you, Matt. Thanks. Thank you, Matt, for attending and for your questions. Thank you, Matt, for your time. Yeah. And everybody be safe. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you.